I'm going to ask a bunch of different questions. First, like how much stuff are you like physically producing? Do you produce a, we're talking a piece a day, a piece a week, a piece, like what's your, what's the level of output that you're doing and how do you go about, say again? No, oh, yeah, I'm missing. How do I go um, about and do you, do you produce because you're like, oh, I need to fill inventory for these six galleries or do you produce just to, to produce or do you come up with ideas, create them? And then what is the creation versus kind of business as that pendulum swings back and forth? What does that look like? Like how does, which one lead, does one lead the other? And if that, if they do, what, which one leads which? No, I can produce a lot quick and then I can produce nothing and for wide. I just, let's say when I have an ID, I put it to process right away. I'm, I don't have any patient, patience when it comes to that. So as soon as I, I have something in my head and I want to do it, I can't wait. I do it right away, which is wrong because I don't leave enough space to do. I'm new to TikTok, so it's really hard to build. Me too. TikTok. And that's my dog. Give me a second. All right. And I'm to ask the boy. It's my dog, Elvis. Love it. So yeah, no, the, TikTok, uh, I try. It's it's really for youngsters. Like they really get it better than I do. But try my best. In terms of selling, do this, man. in terms of selling, I think it's 70, 30 percent, seventy percent gallery, thirty percent direct. And so do you, oh, okay. So you're primarily gallery. Yeah. The and do you get most of your the 30 that's not gallery that's inbound, does that come via like Instagram? Does that come via like relationships? What is to, uh, what does that look like? Is that like yeah. people just messaging you saying, oh my God, I need to have this? Yeah. 20% is Instagram, 10% is connection. Yeah. Yeah. When it comes okay. to the online sale, it's mostly Instagram. Yeah. Okay. And do you spend, I guess my next question is like how much time You've obviously brought in some assistants that help you with a bunch of stuff. How much time of your work week is spent doing art versus the businesses of art? Like the, like filming uh, content, doing, think, doing everything that's not art production. I think the bigger you get, the less you make art <laughs> because you're too busy. Like you constantly on the phone because I have also a site also, like I have an NFT project or I'm into digital art too. Like that's something I develop heavily and that takes a lot of my time too. So yeah, unfortunately, but sometimes it's good because when you do only art, you get lost. It's good to have, it's good to have the, to feel the need. Fuck, I need to stop. I want to do something. I want to paint. You know what I mean? It's, it gives you, it gives you a reason to be hungry, to make art. Before it's the something else. Now it's just, nah, I never fucking get time. I want to make time for art. I don't know. Gets harder and harder. Now you said you do digital art. So were you part of the whole NFT craze? Did you yeah. catch that early, middle, late? I catch it late, but I didn't let it go. Like everybody, I, I catch it late, but instead of everybody, I went even more heavy on it, especially now, but now I'm building something strong. I, I can't say everything about it. Everything's going on, but I definitely will put myself as a big player when, when it's going to rebound. I'll be fucking ready and, and I will have something really legit and strong. And, and I have already like a nice project that has strong bones and it, it, and is doing well, but like financially, yeah, I missed it, but it's okay. It's all right. Not a big deal. Yeah. I, I caught a little bit of it, and, but it was early and still missed it. So the, <laughs> the, the, trust me, I feel worse because I was there before it all started. And I was like, in fairness, at the beginning, I didn't believe, like they never believed in digital art until it was too late. So it's never too late. It's the, uh, never too late. Right now it's actually. A yeah, that's for sure. Now, yeah. Now's the building time, as they say. Uh, to make sure you, yeah, I'm just starting to work. I'm trying to teach myself blender. So don't do that. It's hard. <laughs> the, so can you talk about what you're doing in terms of like, when you look at your digital art, is it in conjunction with your real world art or is this kind of its own thing? And like, how do you look at it from like a business perspective? Do you look at it as an additional revenue driver? Do you look at it as authenticity for your real art? Like what's the connection for you, if any? I think it's in a mixture of everything. I think that first for me, it's definitely the, 
the next thing, the next movement into the art history. I always believed in digital art being the next step. I just, I had no, no knowledge about crypto and Web3. And I'm not savvy like this. So I'm not, I don't go to school so much, but instinctively and with my instinct after street art, and I thought she was starting to be really lame and everybody was trying to be street art and celebrity, try to do street art and it became too mainstream. I often thought that's why I started to do 3D in my installation in the street, because I wanted to bring another element. And then I was, and I felt that after the three dimensional element, it had to be digital and uh, to develop other sense, but I didn't knew about the NFT, the crypto, the web three, I heard about it, but I wasn't into that. And then when I started being into crypto first, I made money with Dogecoin actually. And, uh, and, uh, and I thought it was fascinating and I started to get into the crypto and then some people that approached me to do a PFP project, an NFT project. And then I started to research it, and, but we started yeah. late and we took our time with it. And because I wanted to do it right and I wanted to do it nice. And then when we ended up to the mint day, it was really when everything was collapsing. But because of that, I got to change partners. So one was a bad partner because it was only, uh, it was only drive by money. The two other one, they were just lacking vision and knowledge, but in, in all fairness, if the project was very successful financially, I know they would have work on it, try to learn more stuff and things like this and be fully involved in the project, but whatever. So I tried to keep the project, I, bring, I brought in new people and I, and then now it's like, it's, I have a very beautiful panel of advisor, people that are like professional in the web three, legit people. Like we're talking about like people you couldn't even speak to. A year ago. And this is the beautiful, the beauty of today's market is that you can reach out to anyone because the market is crap. So they all have their open ears, open-minded. So I, yeah, I took advantage of that. And now I have a really nice panel of people around me that support the project and that really help us like grow. And, uh, and then all the things on the side are coming in the plate. And uh, I think it's a fantastic thing, the digital artwork. And I think we didn't even scratch the surface of it. I think. NFT is just like an introduction. Unfortunately, I had a bad publicity because of fucking asshole scammer that if they listen and see us go fuck yourself. And uh, yeah, like they're like low fucking shitty life. People that scam other people. I'm just going to say it again because they really bother me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's fucked up, but yeah, it... I'm so revolt with this shit, but it, and I revolt, uh, I tell you why, because web three and NFT, it's an open door for everybody that don't necessarily have the resources that rich people have connected people have, or none of that. You can literally being in India, Africa, fucking Antarctica, be on your computer and do some NFTs and get revenue out of it. And it's, and, and I think it's so. Yeah, and I think it created so many more art collectors, like it democratized the world of art and it got so many people to realize that art and being creative, like that was a, like a real avenue for kind of life and direction, which is, I think is, that is substantially a net positive. Like I, I'm, I'm super bullish on, I'm still super bullish on the space and think you'll see, we'll see 10 more iterations of it be before it goes. The, is it like a, for you, is it like, is digital art like a big financial percentage or is it something you're building and working towards because you believe it's going to be something that's the future? Right now, it's something that costs me a lot. <laughs> that's not something that okay. I make. Money. That's something that I invest and that costs okay. me a lot of money. So eventually, and I hope so, I will bring some revenue. But for me, okay. it's to be there and to be active in the space as an artist. And I want to play my role as an artist. The, right. And that's, that's how you know your passion is figure out where you're spending your money.